exposures and outcomes. In a study there is the outcome of interest, the primary exposure known as risk factor of interest, other exposures that may influence the outcome, commonly known as potential confounders. The definition of both the exposure and outcome depends on the question you are asking. The primary exposures are the ones you include in your hypothesis. In this section, we will examine a few examples of exposures and outcomes. Question 1. Does smoking increase the risk of lung cancer? Smoking is the exposure. Lung cancer is the outcome. Question 2. Is consumption of aflatoxin associated with increased risk of liver cancer? Aflatoxin is the exposure. Liver cancer is the outcome. Most of the time, you will need to measure more than one exposure. There are two reasons why this is necessary. One reason is because you do not know which exposures are likely to be risk factors for the disease. That is, you do not know which exposures are primary. The other reason is because some exposures may get in the way when trying to sort out a relationship between primary exposure and outcomes. That is, they may act as confounding factors. It is now time to see an example of a confounding factor. Question 3. Is caffeine consumption during pregnancy associated with increased risk of low birth weight? Exposure to caffeine during pregnancy could be associated with increased risk of low birth weight. Smoking during pregnancy could also be associated with increased risk of low birth weight. Is this a case of multiple exposures? It is necessary to determine as to which one of the two is the confounding factor. What do we mean by confounding factors? A confounding factor is any variable that distorts the apparent relationship between the primary exposure and the outcome of interest, as stated in the research question. It is generally described as the effect of a third variable on estimated risk for a health outcome. Confounding occurs when a third factor related to the outcome is differently distributed across the levels of the risk factor or exposure that is of interest. When this occurs, measures must be taken to separate the effect of the confounder from the effect of the risk factor of interest. It is also necessary to understand that an outcome in one case could be the exposure in another. For example, low birth weight could be associated with increased risk of hypertension. But, we have seen in the previous example that low birth weight is considered an outcome of caffeine intake during pregnancy. So, low birth weight is an outcome in one case and an exposure in another case.